right, good morning. Thank you for being with us today. I'm glad you're here. It's a beautiful day in the house of the Lord, and it's going to be a beautiful day in your place of worship as well. John chapter 14, verse 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes unto the Father except through me. Jesus there is referring to His passageway to heaven. But as I think about going on a trip, what's one thing that, excuse me, there's actually two things that the old timers needed, including myself, to go on a trip. You need a map and a compass. The compass points you in the right direction, and the map gets you the fine roads when you get down to the detail. Well, today, most of us have this thing called a little smartphone, and we can carry it with us, and we can type in our GPS, and we can put destination, and it can literally take us right where we need to go. I heard a story one time of a soccer mom had a van full of soccer kids, and they were headed off to a soccer game. The lady went to turn on the interstate, and she turned east instead of turning west. Not really paying attention, didn't think she did anything wrong. She just continued to go. One of the kids said, I think we're going in the wrong direction. She realized she was going in the wrong direction. She made a U-turn and got back on the way that she should be going. When we find our way going through life, we have to have some help, don't we? Yes, your parents help you as a kid. As you get older, hopefully your spouse or your, your kids will help you, however the case may be. But we always need help when going through life. Some people say, it just feels like the right thing to do. I'll make my pathway because it feels good. The problem with feeling good is what? What happens when we feel bad? What happens when our feelings change? What happens when our emotions change? We make popular choices because of our feelings. Let me give you an, a very popular choice today. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one come to the Father except through me. The popular decision this morning is that we follow Jesus. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. Most importantly, Jesus is the way. When you're following Jesus, you're headed in the right direction. Our passage today is Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, and it's the story of the wise men. Let's be like the wise men. You want to? Let's follow the star, and let's see where it will lead us. Let's pray together. Most loving, gracious God, be with us, guide us, protect us. Show us, Father, the way that you would go. Let us truly follow that star. Bless each one that's assembled here, and bless each one that's assembled afar. For it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. The Bible says what? This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you. Good morning. Um, Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you for the many blessings you give us each and every day, God. Lord, lead this time of worship on tune, off tune, on key, off key, Lord. Just have your way in it, Father God. Lord, we praise you. We give you all the honor and glory in your name. Amen. Uh, if you will, turn, turn in your blue hymnal to page 209 and stand and sing with us and clap and have a good time. I'm going to sing this, this is the day, two times through. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad. We 
clad in it. This is the day. This is the day. That the Lord has made. You know, I uh, I went through this week. I know you should t- turn your page to 354. Um, went through this week and. You know, the Christmas season, it's it's over. And it was really exciting this year because we get to do a lot of new, different things that we normally don't get to do. Um, for one, for the first time in a very long time, you got to sit Christmas morning and look out and see the, the snow on the ground. Um, you know, following after we opened up uh, the gifts that we had for each other at our, our household, the kids, they went outside and played in the snow. So, you know, it's just a a good fun time and you know I was off the whole week beforehand so it was it was really magical for our family but then you know we I get right back into the normal hustle and bustle of every day at work and I'm right back into the same groove you know already and, and what I did for preparation um, last night was uh, you know, I, I looked over the verse that, that Brock had, and it made me realize, you know, what are we following? Are we, are, we letting, are we letting God lead us by following the star, or are we going our own way and, and making our own shortcuts? And that's not the journey that God has for us. So we really got to remember to let him lead us, because that is... That's the only way we're going to get through this pandemic, through this world, through this uh, sin, through through everything is is the Lord leading us and us holding each other up and accountable, Lord. So, thank you, guys. So we're going to do I cannot tell on page three fifty four. Yeah. 
We're going to go back one page to good old victory in Jesus because that's, that's what we have. Because the end of the book, the end of the book says what's, what's happening. as he comes to forth to bring a message, Lord. Lord, just let us remember to follow you, Father God. In your precious name. Or, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. I got fat finger syndrome yesterday. I noticed I made a Facebook post out and it was went on. And luckily I just got a notification. Luckily I got a notification. Don't need to start over. Luckily I got a notification that we had. Uh, and I looked at the post and it said Matthew chapter 1, uh, not chapter 2. And it's supposed to be Matthew chapter 2. I made it right. Nobody, I don't know if anybody caught it or not, but... Uh, Thank you again for being here, Matthew chapter 2. This is the story of the wise men, and uh, you know, the wise men were not part, quote, of the nativity, 
But I love putting them there, and I like it while they're there because they did ultimately go and worship the baby Jesus. And so from that, I want us to look at Matthew chapter 2, starting in verse number 1, in honor of reading God's Word. Let's stand, please. And when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, before there was... There came wise men out of the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we have seen the star in the east and came to worship him. And when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes and the people together, he demanded of them where Christ was to be born. And then they said, Bethlehem of Judea, for thus is written by the prophet, and though Bethlehem in the land of Judea are not the least among the prophets of Judah, for thou, for out of thee shall come a, a governor that shall make rule of thy people of Israel. Verse number 7. And Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star had appeared. And, they were, and he sent them to Bethlehem to go and search diligently for the, for the young child. And when they had found him... And found him bring, him, bring him word that he could come worship him also. Verse number 9. And when they had heard King Herod, they departed, and lo, the star which was shown in the east went before them until they came and stood where the Christ child was. And when they saw the star, they were rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had came into the house of the young child, there was Mary. They fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And I want us to pay attention to verse number 12. And being warned by God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed to their own country another way. Let us pray. Most loving, gracious God, out of the reading of your word, make it alive and well in us today. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. The star... The title of my message, let me back up. The title of my message is Follow That Star. Follow that star. The star means freedom. What happens when they found the star? The Bible says that they rejoiced. When you find what you're looking for, what's the one thing you do? You rejoice. I often think of re true rejoicing as a childbirth. A mother holds a baby inside for nine months and everything goes as planned and there's good moments and sick moments and, and great moments and crying moments and sometimes you, as, as you mothers know and as us dads know, sometimes you women laugh and cry at the same time and we don't understand. But it is such a beautiful, what happens when the mother finally delivers the baby? What happens? There's a sigh of relief, and there immediately is great joy. I don't care how ugly that baby is. Everybody always says, oh, look how cute. Not really, but okay, sure, we can understand. And your baby's the cutest baby ever born, and that's the way it should be, okay? But we, when we find what we're looking for, we rejoice. We're just as happy as we can be. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. I want to take just a second here and, and pause just for a second. And it doesn't say we're to rejoice in our circumstances. Because some of us are going through circumstances, have gone through circumstances. Oh, and by the way, yes, we will be going through circumstances. We don't have, it doesn't say we're going to worship our circumstances. It says, for when we look at our outer problems, the things that surround our lives, we can't help but think there is zero possibility. Have you ever asked these two questions? Rejoice, really, God? You really want me to rejoice in what I'm doing right now? No. He doesn't want us to rejoice in our circumstances. Paul is telling the church in Philippi, he is saying this, Rejoice, all, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the 
Lord, we're not rejoicing in our circumstances, but we are to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice that you're in those circumstances. Rejoice in the Lord while you're in those circumstances. So many times we just want to run away and, and deal with our own problems and then we'll come out of the woodwork smelling. No, don't focus on your circumstances. The focus should not be on that little ball of trouble. The, the focus should not be on that little situation. The focus should be and has to be and always should be rejoice in the Lord. We are called to rejoice, which means we are called to rejoice in the fact that God is always available. God is always available. We all like the situations where we put ourselves in these bad situations and then we want to give God the credit and God the glory. I'm not saying a prosperity gospel and I'm not saying a life filled of easiness because that doesn't exist. Even among those prosperity gospel preachers, if they're honest with themselves, they probably struggle with a lot of things too. But here's what happens. We focus on our situation and we're not rejoicing in the Lord for always being there. I remember one time going through a bad situation a few years ago and the church began to pray and, and they be, the, the church going through a situation, they began to pray and they sought God's face and they says, man, this is a rocky road. Man, this is an uphill climb. How are we ever going to get out of this? And then somebody said, imagine how hard it had been had you not prayed to God. Imagine how hard your situation would have been. It was hard. It was unbearable. You couldn't go on anymore. But imagine how hard it would be had you not rejoiced in the Lord. C.S. Lewis says, I know, Lord, you utter no answer. You are yourself the answer. But before you face questions, die away. What other word would suffice? What else would suffice but Jesus? Have you ever thought Jesus don't give you the answers? Why doesn't He give you the answers? John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. He don't have to give you an answer because He is the answer. Jesus is the answer. We sang the song, and Shane and I didn't talk. If you look in the next line of my notes here, it says, This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. True rejoicing is not found in worldly things. True rejoicing is only found in godly things, in the things that are God, in the things that are of God, in the things that belong to God. Do you want to truly rejoice today? Do you want to truly rejoice today? Do you truly want to rejoice today? Then don't look at your circumstances. Rejoice in the Lord. We can always rejoice in the Lord because God changes our hearts, not our circumstances. Sometimes He doesn't pull us out of the fire, but He pulls, He always pulls our heart in the direction that we go. True rejoicing, I wouldn't be remiss if I didn't mention this. True rejoicing starts with salvation. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Do you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, let me say this, you don't know anything. If you don't have Jesus, if you don't have a relationship with Him, then you don't have anything. And salvation starts with Him. I talked a little bit about it last week, about baptism, and, or Wednesday night, excuse me, but have you ever thought about when you see someone come to the altar, what do they do? What do they do? They run and they get... We, they say they make a decision to follow Jesus, they accept Him into their heart, they make Him Lord of their life, and immediately what do they do? They run and tell everybody. They're just so excited. Because they've got to finally got that joy down in their heart. Can I be honest this morning? When was the last time we, when was the last time we 
ran and told somebody about our salvation? When was the last time we came down here, held the preacher's hand and, and turned, and we stand right here, and the preacher pats us on the back, and we, if you're, we do it this way. If you're a good church, you come around this side, you give the good hand of fellowship, and at Deep Springs, we like to hug on our kids, we like to hug on our adults, and you come through, and you give that big old hug, and, and then that little kid runs out, or that adult runs out and tells the good news. And so many times, many of us just want to sit right back down. So many other times, many of us just want to sit right here. And here's really what we do. We take our hands, we put them behind us, and then we sit on our hands just so that we know we're not going to do anything. And a lot of times, though, all we got to do is when we stand right here and we say, we come down and we get the good voice of fellowship, we want to run around and we want to tell everybody the good news of Jesus Christ. When was the last time that you ran? and told someone the good news of Jesus Christ. Was it the last time when you got saved? Was that the last time? Well, if that's the case, it's been way too long. Talk about the joy of your salvation because true rejoicing is found when we follow the star. True rejoicing is found when we find Jesus. And when we find Jesus, we can't sit on our hands and not tell the good news of Jesus Christ. You say, Brock, I don't talk with my hands. No, you talk with your mouth. The Bible says, though, that we are the hands and feet of Jesus. Are you running with your feet? And are you showing with your hands the joy of your salvation? The star means rejoicing. The star also means freedom. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty whereat Christ has made us free, and we shall be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. When the wise men found the baby, they rejoiced. I think the wise men rejoiced because they had realized that the Old Testament stories were true. They realized that the Old Testament came to life, and they couldn't help but rejoice. The wise men were very smart. They were called wise men. There were about a hundred of them in that area in that time. And you had to test to get in. And, and literally all they did was sit around and in a great big old room. And they made up all, they didn't make up rules. They just interpreted them. And they read the Bible. And they, they challenged each other. The scroll, excuse me, they didn't have a Bible. They had a scroll. And, and they began to challenge each other. And they, and they put every, all the stuff together. And they were really, really, really smart men theologians if you will they were really smart okay they knew what they were talking about these particular wise men when they saw Jesus they saw freedom they saw no more taking a pigeon taking a dove taking a baby lamb to the altar for sacrifice for the Lord they saw no more sacrifices being made because they knew that baby Jesus would grow up and in just 33 short years, He would pay the price. He would be the one. And when we accept Jesus, we're no longer bound by the yoke of bondage. Some of your Bibles will say slavery there. Whatever it be, we're no longer bound. I've never been in handcuffs before. Hope to never be in handcuffs, and if I ever, no, I'll never be. That just, I ain't going there. I'm not. So, but I could imagine when you see the store, when you see people in handcuffs, your hands are tied. You can't be the hands and feet of Jesus if your hands are bound together. You can't be the hands and feet of Jesus if your feet are tied together. You can't be the hands and feet of Jesus if there's a chain from your ankle to your wrist and you're walking like this. You can't be the hands of Jesus. But praise be to God, when Jesus paid sacrifice for our body, He immediately ripped those chains off of Himself. He didn't have chains on, but it's a symbolism. He ripped the chains off. Why did He rip His chains off? So that we could rip our chains off. We're no longer held in bondage because of Jesus. The same way that we walk into that church, we should have freedom. We should have freedom to worship, freedom to sing, freedom to pray, freedom to praise. And I heard that compliment this week. You can tell me a lot of things. 
Some of y'all can beat me up and tear me down. Some of you all can lift me up and praise me. And I'm thankful for both of you all because sometimes both of y'all do the same thing. <laughs> and so, but I heard this week that there's a good spirit in our church. And the exact words were it was a spirit of freedom. It was a spirit of freedom. And I truly hope that's the case. And I, you want to know why there's a spirit of freedom in Deep Springs Baptist Church? Because Jesus is here. And you know what Jesus brings? He brings freedom. Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 through 15. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break down the power of him who holds the power of death, and that is the devil. Verse 15 says, And free those all Free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. Because of Jesus, we have freedom. We're no longer bound up because we have Jesus. The freedom to move about is there. If you come to church this morning and you feel like you're bound up and you're tied up and you're, you just can't worship today, that's because you've not been released by something that's holding you back. That's because you've not been released and you've not held true to the freedom that is Jesus Christ. Do you know Him today? Do not turn Him away. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Without Him, how lost I would be. When we see the star, we rejoice. When we see freedom, we should, we see the star, we should see freedom. If I get the camera right over here to move to the star above the Christmas tree, I want us to focus, uh, all of us here today and, and all of us at home, and, and I want us to focus just a second on the star that's on top of that tree. I don't know the date. I know Tommy told us at Christmas, but it's been well, many, many, many years, many, many, many years, some, something like 70, 70 years that star has been on top of that tree. That star represents some of the old roots that come through Deep Springs Baptist Church. I've been here almost two years. Some of you all have been here 50 years. Some of you all have been here the whole 70 years and somewhere in between. But the star on top of that tree also represents roots. Represents roots. Now, we got little Gracie, and we got little Ray Ray. We got some other young, young Christians in here today. They haven't quite had a chance to set their roots now, the, the day that they accepted God's gift of salvation, the roots begin to grow and they set down in the ground. It's only been a few months for some of them. Their roots hadn't quite developed yet. The star represents roots. Some of us have had time to grow our roots. The problem is we're choosing not to grow our roots. You ever noticed a single pine tree standing by itself? No. Most of the time you'll never see, especially a tall, old, mature pine tree standing by itself. Why? Because a tall pine tree, when it grows roots, the roots don't go deep into the ground. They go just right on top of the ground, but they spread out really far. So why do you, why do you see a pine tree thicket for? How do they survive? Because the roots of those trees grow together. And they're intertwined together. And it's a big old ugly mess when you go to dig them out. But it's a beautiful mess because you see that not one root is going into the ground. But they're all banded together. Where's your root system today? Are you standing like a tall pine tree out in the middle of an open field? And you're not going to last long. The only way we can make it as Christians is if we take the roots and we grow together and we're bounded together. I like it when our church laughs together. 
That makes me so happy. Last week, it, it, was, it was beautiful to see us interacting and, and, and weeks before, and, and I'll probably see it next week. It's beautiful for us to laugh together. Can you tell you what's even more beautiful? When we cry together. When we hurt together. You know why that is? Why do we hurt? Why do we? Because our roots are grown together. Might not be very deep, but they're grown together and they're able to withstand. So, as we follow the star today, let's make sure that we're following Jesus. The wise men followed a star that led to Jesus. And when they found Jesus, they worshipped Him alone. When they found Jesus, they had true freedom. I want us to look at verse number 12. It says, And being warned of God in a dream, they should not return to Herod. They departed unto their own country another way. Here's what happens when we find Jesus. We rejoice. We get freedom. But we also get roots. We also get roots bound in the church and bound in fellow believers. When we have those roots, we get a verse 12. When your roots are grounded, you get a verse 12 you get that daily protection, that daily saving grace that only Jesus can have. So many times we overlook verse 12 in our Bible, but it is very important. Had they returned and Herod found Jesus, he might not have had Jesus. But because those wise men sought, they found and they believed God revealed to them. When we seek Jesus, when we find Him, He then will reveal to us what we need to do. By the wise men going a different way, it took about two years to get back to King Herod. You know what happened in those two years? That's right. King Herod died of a natural death. God has a plan and purpose for your life. It starts with rejoicing. He wants us to rejoice. It starts with freedom. He wants us to live a life that is no longer in bondage. But He gives us daily protection and daily guidance. Let me ask you again, do you know Him today? Are you rejoicing today? Do you have true freedom? If you said no to any one of these, then I want to remind you that this altar is open. The church is open. Are you open to rejoicing and to true freedom? The star will lead you where you need to be. Are you willing to follow? Turn to page 488, just as I am.
I think this is the first time we've had this, uh, but it pleases my heart, it pleases my soul. We got a couple of prayer requests that came through the Facebook feed, and if you're at home, you saw, if you're here, you didn't, but because y'all took the time to do that, I'm going to publicly announce that we need to pray for Terry Clevenger. Terry lost his wife after a long, serious illness, and so we need to remember him, and, and we noticed that Tommy's not here today, that's because... He's at home tending to Miss Yvonne, so I pray that you will pray for Tom and Yvonne and Terry and just, you know, it's good. It's good that people trust us to pray. That makes me happy. It, people trust us to pray. But why do people trust us to pray? Because we pray. Because we pray. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. Absolutely. Because we pray. Our message today was follow the star. And when you find the star, it will lead you to where you need to be. Amen. We're not following a star anymore. We're following something even better. And that is Jesus. Follow Jesus and he'll put you where you need to be. Be safe and serve on. Before we close, Miss Ray Ray, come here. Hop up here. Get up here. It's okay. There you go. I'll get in trouble. It'll be all right. I probably shouldn't say this, but I will. I knelt down to pray for little Ray Ray, and I heard her praying. And uh, Ray Ray, will you dismiss us in prayer this morning, please? Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. I hope everybody has a good day today and tomorrow. I hope everybody has a bed to sleep in and food to eat. Amen. 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 Thank you. Maybe Steve.